Hey everyone, uh, I decided I'd make a video on how to bulletproof your uh, letters in Aspire when you're doing 3D lettering. I like to do a lot of 3D lettering in my designs because I only like to do two at max three tool changes when I'm doing uh, any of my pieces. <clears throat> so I don't use a lot of the V carved uh, tool pass with V bits or anything like that. I just like to use one rough pass with a 3 8 end mill. Uh, upcut is what I use. It's from Rip Precision Tools. And it clears everything out real quick. And um, then I like to use either a 1 16th uh, inch tapered ball nose from Rip Precision. And they make one that I use all the time that has a 2 and a half inch uh, cut length. So it the cutter sticks above the material that I use. I usually use two inches and below and then most commonly I use an inch and five eighths thick material for all my designs that are 12 inches or larger. So I'm going to go ahead here and start with this bulletproof uh, text here and show you the way that I do it. I mean this is a very large size right here. It's uh, an inch and a half but I'll shrink it down <clears throat> and then I'll show you a tip because a lot of the times the text that I use is very small. It could be this size. But you don't want to create it at the smallest size. What you want to do, because this is all pixel based software, it looks really bad and you can't really judge for the most part how it's going to turn out. Um, but you see this, see how pixelated and how bad it is. There's one thing that you can do to change it. You can go to drawing and then you go to set job dimension, hold shift. And the reason you hold shift is because usually you can only get to the very high um, modeling resolution uh, if you don't hold shift. But if you hold shift, it opens up like almost like a cheat code to a video game. It will get you to your maximum. It does slow you down majorly. Um, but it gets you a better preview. So see how that's so pixelated? It's still not great. But what you do, so I'll keep that there. You come here, you leave that there, you copy this, and then you bring it out as big as you can go. And you go to your modeling tab, and then let's set it at 0.5 half an inch so see how much better that looks it's still pixelated but it looks way better so when you do this you're gonna come back that's created and you're gonna go to your smoothing tool and this is the reason that you go big your smoothing tool when you use this and forgive my dog snoring and whatnot, they're over there. I got two bulldogs, dogs, so that you're gonna hear them a lot sleeping over there. So the reason you go to the smoothing tool when they're big is it doesn't take as much edge away. So when you're using the smoothing tool, what it's doing is it's kind of creating a bit of a draft, as you can see. So if you take it all the way off, it's straight up and down. But when you're smoothing it, it's not just smoothing, getting rid of those uh, rough, jagged edges. It's also adding a bit of a draft and rounding those corners. I had a heck of a time when I first started using this software um, trying to figure out how to get around that. But And then you'll see that it still leaves a little bit of a jagged edge down here, but that doesn't really show up. Um, in the machining process. It's just something that's there. So if you take, and it's on pres, uh, when you're on preserved transparency. So if you click that off, it's got to think for a second. And it takes a lot longer with the resolution setting we're on. So it drafts it even more. You can see that it's an angle. And that's actually good when um, you're shrinking it back down because the problem is, is if you don't do that and have a draft on it, 
when your tool, even though that it's got a taper on it, it's basically ramming into it, and that's what's causing a lot of blowout problems I've had. And it'll rip out like these finer features, like uh, when you shrink this down, like here, and then even just when you get the the smaller uh, features that are out by themselves more. So we could leave it like this. Or another thing you can do to prevent um, that <clears throat> drafting effect like that, where it's taken away like the thickness, you kind of it kind of ruins the look of some of the fonts when it does that as well. Is we'll close out of this and we'll click on. You gotta. So this is an annoying thing with Vetric that I wish that they would switch. So you're going to want to add um, a draft to it. But then you have to click off anything that's visible, which is really annoying, and that's when these levels come in handy for situations like this, although I use them for many other um, reasons. You can insert a level, and you can throw it over there. Um, so right now, it's, it's um, adding it on top of it, which you can change that, and then come back here and shut this off. Because if you don't, it's gonna, I'll show you what happens. If it's visible, it's going to create one component out of both of those, and it'll add a draft to both of them. I use anywhere from 5 to 15% of a draft, and sometimes more, but usually 10 gets it done. Well, I'll show you what not to do. And it's taking much longer because of the higher resolution. So see, there's that draft, but... This is what happens to me sometimes if I don't see, like if I'm zoomed in and I don't see something out there outside of the screen out here. So it's one component now. See, so we don't want that. We're going to go back. So it's turned on now, turn it off. And then you can hit draft now and you don't even have to select it because it's anything that's visible, which is really annoying. And I wish that if you had it selected, that it would only affect that one thing. Because if I can get to a point where I have 100 different components going on, and I have to go back through there, and I have 20, 25 different le uh, levels, and I have to go back there and shut each one of them off. So it, it gets really repetitive. And the, the biggest thing with um, the CAD world and designing is the less clicks, the better. But that's enough griping for now. So we'll add the draft. Okay, so there's the draft. So notice, keep a good watch on these edges. So we'll go back to the smoothing tool. You have a little bit of that jagged edge there, see? So there's the jagged edge, and then usually 15 to 20% gets rid of most of it, and you won't see it in the machining process. But just see how much more of that edge that you still, that thickness you still have. See, it's a lot more. Even when you go all the way, it's a lot more of that letter that's still there, that surface that's not like shrunk down. And that comes, it's not so bad with letters, but then when you start getting into like creating um, like designs, um, features, uh, like, you, like if you're making a baseball and you're putting um, the ropes on it, or you're making an anchor and you're putting anything on top of it, like the chains or ropes, uh, depending on how you have it set up, it'll shrink it down so much that it's just a giant pain. So if you go in there and you throw that draft on there, it leaves you a lot more of that. So we'll leave it like that about halfway. And then you have, so it creates a second one, as you see here. It's still there. So you have to shut that off. And then that one will already been a, been active. And then you could drag it back in here if you wanted, where a lot of your main work in the level one might be still going on. But what, then what you do is you come back, you select it, and then you select the text again, and then that helps you as a, for like a blueprint to see where you need to line it back up, and then you shrink it down. And I'm this was the biggest thing that helped me is when I figured this out. So it's pretty much lined up. You're not going to get it perfect 
because it's going off of the shape more than it is the text. You can move it over a little bit and try getting it lined up as much as you want. You're just trying to get it close. So I'll shut that off. And then see how much better that looks. It still looks a little jagged, but that's going to be because you're working in such a big work area too. You can also change that and it'll change how much uh, more defined that is. So if we shrink that down to four by four, it looks a lot better. So that it gives you more of an idea what it's going to look like once machined. And then also you can go back into the modeling tab, go here and just see that you went from that to that and then whatever you had that set at so it was an eighth of an inch you can come back here and change that to the same height and that's how I bulletproof my letters. I do designs, uh, four inch designs for a lot of uh, Christmas ornaments that I do that are way smaller than this and I have zero blowout issues if I throw a draft on there. So uh, that's enough for this video and uh, just look forward uh, or look for me making more videos here pretty soon. I'm just trying to go over stuff that a lot of little stuff more than like what you see Mark Lindsay do where he's doing full out videos that you know however long his get I'm just trying to cover the small end stuff right now that helped me progress to the designs that I that you guys see me post on the Facebook group a lot so other than that thanks for watching